Hello, I'm Jack. Welcome to Practical Programming Channel. In this video series, you will learn everything you need to get started with WebGPU graphics programming. In the last few videos, we discussed how to use the color map model to build 3D simple surfaces. In this video, I will explain how to create 3D parametric surfaces with both the lighting and the color map effects. As seen previously, a key feature for a 3D simple surface is that for each x and z a value pair, it can have at most one y value. However, sometimes you may want to create a complex 3D surfaces of a certain shape. This kind of complex surface cannot be represented by a simple mathematical formula. For certain values of x and z, this type of surfaces may have more than one y values. This means that we cannot use the approach discussed in the last few videos to store and display the data. One way to present such a surface is to use a set of parametric equations that define x, y, z coordinates on the surface in terms of the parametric variables u and v. You can see here the x, y, z coordinates can be expressed in terms of u and v. U and V are parametric variables. Many complex surfaces can be represented using parametric equations, such as a sphere, torus, climb, bottle, quadric surfaces, etc. In fact, the simple surface is just a special case of the parametric surfaces. We can easily convert a simple surface y equal to fxz is described by this equation. We can easily convert this simple surface into a parametric surface using this formula. Set x equal to u and z equal to v. So y equal to f u v instead of xz because x equal to u and z equal to z. So y equal to f u and v. So this is a parametric equation for a simple surface. Note that in the parametric space, for each u and a v value pair, the function is single-valued. This means that in the parametric space, our parametric surface is a simple surface. So we can use the approach for the simple surface to create parametric surface in the parametric space. Therefore, we can still use the quadrilateral mass grids in the UV parametric space to approximate the parametric surface as shown here. This is a unit grid in the parametric space for our parametric surface. This unit cell contains the four vertices. Here, we will use the gate tool to clone the source code used in the last uh, video. Here is the download link at GitHub repository. From this link, you can download the source code used in the last uh, video. Now, open a command prompt window and run the following command, git clone, and paste this link. This will generate a WebGPU 26 folder on your local machine. This folder contains all the source code used in the last uh, video. Now we want to change the name of the WebGPU 26 folder to GPU 27. Rename Web 27 and CD into it. At this point, we are going to start Visual Studio Code with the command code period. This is a Visual Studio Code interface. 
Okay, we can close this welcome page. Now here contains the source code used in the last uh, video. Now open the new terminal window and run the command npm install to restore the npm packages used in this project. Okay, finished. Now all the installed packages are stored in the node modules here, node modules folder. Now we can close this terminal window because we don't need it. From SRC folder, open the surface data.ts file. Since parametric surfaces are in fact the simple surfaces in the parametric space, we can reuse some code implemented for the simple surfaces, such as the normalize point and the create a call uh, functions. In our case, we actually create a simple surface in the UV space using the uh, approach simple to the one for creating simple surface. The trick to creating a parametric surface is to map the simple surface in the parametric UV space back to the X, Y, Z coordinate system. This mapping is controlled by the parametric equations. The resulting surface in the real world space can be very different from the one in the parametric space. As mentioned before, our parametric surface in the parametric space can be formed by the quadrilateral mass grids. The unit grid is a quadrilateral with the four vertices P0, P1, P2, and P3. Now, for this quadrilateral uh, unit uh, grid, we can use the create call uh, function to create our vertex data, normal vector data, and uh, color map data for this quadrilateral unit cell. This create a call uh, function only create data for a single unit grid. Now we need to create the data for the entire parametric surface. For this purpose, we need to add a new function called parametric surface data to this file here. Here is a code for this parametric surface data function. This function is very similar to the simple surface data function, except here the input function f. Here we define the input mass function with a parametric variable u and v instead of x and z. We also pass the minima and maximum values of u and v to this function to specify the parametric range of interest. This means that in the parametric UV space, we create a constant UV grid with equal spacing in the respective U and V directions. The input parametric function f in this parametric space has at most one value for each pair of U and V values. Next to input parameter NU and NV represent the grid divisions along the U and V direction in the parametric space. This function also take X and Z and value range as the input parameters. Here the scale parameter is the global scaling parameter used in the normalized point function while the scale y parameter is used to control the y value height relative to the x and z value. That is, the scale y controls aspect ratio of our surface plot. Inside this uh, function, we first define the size of unit grid du and dv in the parametric space. We then calculate the vertex positions on our surface by calling this f mass function. 
this function is a function of u and v and center. Here, we also calculate the y value range y mini 1 and y max 1. Next, we reset the y value range using the scanning y parameter here. Next, we normalize the vertex position by calling the normalize point uh, function. Next, inside this for loop, we define the unit grid with the four vertices P0, P1, P2, and P3. We then call the create a call function to get the vertex position, normal vector, and color map that for this unit grid. From this double for loop here, we can get the, this data for entire surface. The parametric surface data returns the vertex data, normal vector data, and color map data here. Now, we finish the coding for this file. We can see this file here. 3D parametric surfaces are relatively complicated. In order to give you more time to digest the code, I will stop here for today. In next video, I will show you how to use parametric surface data function to create a 3D client bottle, which is a typical parametric surface. Most examples presented in this video series are based on my recently published book, Practical Web GPU Graphics. From this link, drsu.net.com, you can see the details about this book. I have created a GitHub repository to host the source code used in this video series. From this link, you can download the source code used in this video series. I also created a live demo at this link. This demo shows the live results by running the example projects presented in this video series. I will end this video here. See you next time. Bye.